Hello everyone! Here's another video tutorial that we may use in studying our lesson in pre-calculus. In today's video, we will discuss solving problems involving conic sections. Let's start! So in solving situational problems involving conic sections, it is essential to follow these steps. So we actually have three. So for the first one, identify the given. Second, determine what is being asked. And lastly, number three, show the solution. And of course, kapag napakita na natin yung solution, uh, we're going to write the conclusion. Ano? Answering ko ano yung hinihingi sa atin dun sa problem. So class, ayan yung susundin natin na steps sa pag-solve ng situational problems involving conic sections. So let's start with our first example. Example number one. Romans built their amphitheaters always in an ovoid shape, or in simple words, an ellipse. One of the amphitheaters in Rome is the Colosseum, known for being the largest of all the others, as well as the fact that it has been a part of Roman history. The Colosseum from its exterior walls is 189 meters long and 156 meters wide. It has a central arena with the same elliptical shape which is 87 meters long and 55 meters wide. Given that the Colosseum and the arena are both horizontally aligned, if the Colosseum center is found on the origin of the Cartesian plane, that is, uh, with coordinates as 0, 0, find the distance between the amphitheater's foci and their same side central arena's vertices, that is, the distance between the focus with a positive x and the central arena's vertex with a positive x, and the same for negative. Ngayon, class, uh, in solving situational problems, mahalaga na naiintindihan natin ay yung content ng given problem natin. So, para lang ma-visualize yung content nito, so ganito, class, yung itsura ng Colosseum. So, again, we have the exterior walls, and then we have the central arena. Okay? Na parehong uh, elliptical yung shape. Ngayon, class, base dito sa problem natin, binigay din sa atin na yung Colosseum from its exterior walls is 189 meters long and 156 meters wide. So, pakita lang natin, class. So, kung ito yung ating Colosseum from its exterior walls, so again, 189 meters long siya and 156 meters wide. Binigay din sa atin, class, yung sa central arena. Okay? Sabi daw, yung central arena natin ay... Uh, 87 meters long and 55 meters wide. Ngayon, class, uh, given din dito sa problem na yung Colosseum natin and the arena are both horizontally aligned. Kaya yung orientation ng ellipse natin ay horizontal. So, dito, class, kapag nagsasolve tayo ng situational problems involving conic sections, kailangan natin balikan yung uh, previous lessons natin. Ano? Kasi may apply natin yon sa pag-solve nung problems natin. And then, if the Colosseum's center is found on the origin of the Cartesian plane, so yung coordinates niya is 0, 0. Ayan, so, binigay na rin sa atin na yung center ng Colosseum ay at point uh, 0, 0. Okay, nasa origin. Ayan. So, yung mga data na binigay sa atin, class, we'll be using that in solving, okay? Uh, in finding what is asked dito sa ating problem. So, class, i-follow lang natin yung steps na na-present natin kanina. So, for the first step, uh, identify the given values. So, tingnan natin. So, una muna, class, for the major axis of the Colosseum. So, una, kanina, ba nakita natin na 189 meters long yung ating Colosseum. Okay? And take note na ang length ng major axis is equal to 2A. So, we will have... 2A is equal to 189 meters. So, para ma-solve natin ng A, uh, we will be dividing both sides by 2. Okay? So, we will have A is equal to 94.5 meters. So, gagamitin natin yan, class, sa pagkuha naman ng vertices ng ating ellipse. So, ang vertices natin ay uh, V sub 1 with coordinates 94.50 and V sub 2 with coordinates negative 94.50. So, para mas makita, sige, tingnan natin yung sketch ng graph. So, again, ang center ha, 
ng ating Colosseum ay nasa origin. Ngayon, uh, from the origin, magka-count lang tayo ng 94.5 units pa kanan, tsaka uh, pakaliwa. So, ito yung visa buwan natin. Okay, so again, ang coordinates niya, 94.50. Tsaka visa buwan natin, coordinates negative 94.50. Okay, bakit pa kanan at pakaliwa yung pag-count natin? Again, kasi horizontal yung orientation ng ating ellipse. Okay? Sige, next. Uh, let's have the minor axis of the Colosseum. So, given sa problem natin, na yung Colosseum daw natin is 156 meters wide. And ang length ng minor axis natin is equal to 2B. Okay? So, we will have 2B is equal to 156 meters. So, divide uli natin pareho by 2. So, we will have B is equal to 78 meters. So, yan yung lumabas na dinivide natin both sides by 2. So, ang co-vertices natin ngayon ay W sub 1 uh, with coordinates as 0, 78 and W sub 2 with coordinates as 0, negative 78. Diba? So, pareho lang kapag nag-count tayo ng 78 units pa taas and 78 units pa baba. Okay? Ayan. Ayan. So, ganyan yung form ng ating ellipse. Ngayon, class, uh, ayan yung para doon sa Colosseum. Okay? Doon sa exterior walls ng Colosseum natin. Ngayon, tingnan naman natin yung major axis ng central arena. Okay? Yung nasa loob. Ngayon, um, ganun ulit yung process na susundan natin. So, ang length ng major axis natin ay equal sa 2A. And, uh, given sa atin na 87 meters long yung ating central arena, so, we will have 2A is equal to 87 meters. Uh, dividing both sides by 2, we will have A is equal to 43.5 meters. So, ang vertices natin para dun sa central arena ay uh, V sub 1 with coordinates 43.50 and V sub 2 with coordinates negative 43.50. So, nasaan? Ayan. So, nandito. Okay. Ayan. Next naman, uh, minor axis naman ng central arena, yung kunin natin. So, again, ang length ng minor axis ay equal sa 2B. And given sa atin na uh, yung ating central arena ay uh, 55 meters wide. Okay? So, we will have 2B is equal to 55 meters. Uh, divide natin both sides by 2. So, B is equal to 27.5 meters. Ayan. So, ito na yung cover thesis natin. Uh, w sub 1 uh, with coordinates as 0, 27.5 and W sub 2 with coordinates as 0, negative 27.5. So, kapag titignan natin yung sketch ng graph, and so, nandito yung ating cover thesis nung central arena. So, class, ito yung form ng ating uh, central arena. Okay? So, proceed na tayo dun sa ating second step. So, for the second step, we're going to determine what is being asked. So, uh, base dito sa problem natin, we're going to find the distance between the amphitheater's foci and their same side central arena's vertices. That is, the distance between the focus with a positive x and the central arena's vertex with a positive x and the same for the negative. So, ang, basically, ang gagawin natin, class, kukunin muna natin yung foci ng ating uh, colosseum o ng ating amphitheater. Okay? And then, uh, sa bawat isang focus, kukunin natin yung distance niya. Doon sa vertex ng ating central arena, okay, na, nasa kapareho niyang side. For example, kapag ay consider natin ay yung focus ng ating colosseum dito sa negative side, kukunin natin yung distance niya dito sa vertex na itong central arena dito sa negative side din. Okay. So, ganun yung gagawin natin. Yun yung kukunin natin for this uh, particular problem. So, sige, tingnan natin paano natin gagawin. So, here's the solution. So, first, we're going to find the amphitheater's foci. Okay, so yung foci na itong ating Colosseum. So, again, ang formula natin para makuha yung value ng C ay ito. So, we have C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So, ang gawin lang natin, class, is substitute lang natin yung data na meron tayo. So, kanina, uh, na-identify na natin yung value ng A uh, to be 94.5 meters. Ano, kaya nga tayo nag-count ng 94.5 uh, units pa kanan at pakaliwa from the center. 
So, ang A natin is 94.5 and then ang B natin ay 78. So, substitute natin. So, we will have C squared is equal to the quantity of 94.5 squared minus the quantity of 78 squared. Okay, so isolve natin further. So, we will have C squared is equal to 8,930.25 minus 6,084. So, basically, kinuwa lang natin yung square neto. O kaya, minultiply natin sa sarili niya. So, 94.5 times 94.5, that will give us this. And then, 78 times 78, uh, 6,084 naman. Okay? So, kunin natin yung difference nito. So, we will have C squared is equal to 2,846.25. So, para ma-solve natin ng C, uh, we will be getting the square root of both sides. So, we will have C is equal to the square root of 2,846.25. So, ang kukunin lang natin, class, is the principal square root. Okay? So, C is approximately 53.35 meters. So, uh, we'll be counting 53.35 meters pa kanan and then pa kaliwa. So, ang coordinates ng foci natin dito ay F sub 1 with coordinates 53.350 and F sub 2 with coordinates uh, negative 53.350. So, tingnan natin, ilocate natin dito. So, we have F sub 1 uh, with coordinates 53.350 and F sub 2 with coordinates negative 53.350. Yan. So, ang next na gagawin natin, class, is to find the distance between the amphitheater's foci and their same side central arena's vertices. So, ang pwedeng gawin natin, class, kunin natin yung distance nito, okay, or yung distance nito dito sa positive side. So, dito sa example natin, class, ang kukunin natin yung distance dito sa negative side. Uh, either way naman, class, pareho lang yung compute natin na distance, Okay. So, ang consider natin ay yung points uh, negative 53.350 tsaka yung negative 43.50. So, kunin natin yung distance ng dalawa kasi yun yung hinihingi sa atin. So, we will be using uh, the distance formula. So, uh, D is equal to the square root of the quantity of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus the quantity of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So, substitute lang natin, class. So, ang x sub 1 natin dito, ito. Ang y sub 1 ay ito. Ang x sub 2 ay ito. Ang y sub 2 ay ito. Okay? So, d is equal to the square root of the quantity of ang x sub 2 natin is uh, negative 43.5. Yung operation natin ay subtraction. So, minus ang x sub 1 natin is negative 53.35. Okay? And then squared plus ang y sub 2 natin ay 0. Ang y sub 1 natin ay 0. So, plus the quantity of 0 minus 0 squared. Yan. So, we will have D is equal to the square root of the quantity of 9.85 squared plus 0 squared. Okay, so, uh, negative 43.5 uh, minus negative 53.35. So, maging ad uh, addition na lang yan. So, negative 43.5 plus 53.35. So, that will give us 9.85. Okay, so, we have quantity of 9.85 squared. Okay, plus 0 squared. Yeah. So, we will have um, D is equal to, okay, so 9.85 times 9.85. So, kinuha lang natin square neto ay equal yan sa 97.0225. And 0 squared is of course 0. Okay, kasi 0 times 0 ay 0. So, we will have D is equal to the square root of 97.0225. Okay. So, ang principal square root neto class ay... 9.85. So, D is equal to 9.85 uh, meters. So, therefore, the distance between the foci of the Colosseum and its central arena's vertices is 9.85 meters. So, class, kapag kinuha natin yung distance nito, 9.85 meters. Kapag kinuha natin yung distance nito, 9.85 meters. Okay, yung distance nila. Okay. So, sana clear tayo with the first example. So, again, mahalaga na isulat din natin yung conclusion. So, sasagutin natin yung hinihingi sa atin dun sa problem. Okay? Let's now proceed to our second example. So, example number two. A student from Tanza National Comprehensive High School got curious about the circular logo just outside their school. He speculates that the logo has a diameter of 2 meters. 
he tells his math teacher that the equation of the circle can be 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y minus 2 is equal to 0 if 1 meter is treated as 1 unit. His teacher says that his constant is wrong. Okay, so the constant in the equation is incorrect. What should the constant be to make his answer right? Ngayon class, para ma-visualize natin, uh, let's say ito yung uh, logo, okay, outside the school. Ayan. Ngayon, yung estudyante, um, uh, he speculates that the logo has a diameter of 2 meters. Okay, so 2 meters daw yung diameter ng logo. Ngayon, sinabi niya rin sa kanyang math teacher na yung equation ng circle can be 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y minus 2 equals 0 if 1 meter is treated as 1 unit. Ngayon, sinabi ni teacher sa kanya, yung constant daw na ginamit dun sa equation ay hindi tama. Okay, so ibig sabihin, hindi negative 2. Ngayon, ang pinapahanap sa atin dito sa problem is kung ano yung constant. Okay, so what should the constant be to make his answer right? So, yan yung kukumpute natin. So, ang gagawin natin, class, is this. So, una, um, ilet muna natin yung constant BK. So, we will have 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y plus k is equal to 0. Okay, so ilet natin yung constant as k. So, yun yung isosolve natin. So, ayan. So, ito yung result natin. So, we have 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y plus k equals 0. So, ngayon, ito yung i-compute natin kung ano yung value ng k. Okay, para maging tama yung equation uh, ng estudyante. Uh, so, we will divide both sides by 2. Okay? Para mas madali tayong makapag-completing the square mamaya. Okay? Para madali natin magamit yung method na yun. So, pag divide natin both sides by 2, so we have 2x squared divided by 2, that will give us x squared. 2y squared divided by 2, uh, y squared na lang yan. Negative 4x divided by 2, negative 2x. Negative 4y divided by 2, negative 2y. And then we have plus k over 2 equals 0. Okay? Kasi 0 divided by 2 is 0. So, yun yung maging result. So, we have x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 2y plus k over 2 equals 0. Ngayon, um, same process para makuha muna natin yung standard form. Okay, no ating uh, equation ng circle. So, pag samasamahin natin lahat ng may variables x. Okay, pag dikit-dikitin natin, tsaka lahat ng may variables y. And then, yung constant natin, i-isolate natin sa kabilang side. Uh, so, we can subtract k over 2 both sides. So, magkakaroon tayo ng x squared minus 2x, ayan, rearrange lang natin, plus y squared minus 2y, and then, nag-subtract tayo ng k over 2 both sides, uh, naging equals negative k over 2. Okay? Next step natin, class, completing the square method na. Okay? So, anong i-add natin dito na constant para maging perfect square trinomial siya? Ganun din, ano yung i-add natin na constant dito para maging perfect square trinomial siya? And again, kung ano yung i-add natin sa isang side, yun din yung i-add natin sa kabilang side. Okay? Since meron tayo yung equality symbol. So, negative 2 divided by 2 is uh, negative 1. And quantity of negative 1 squared is 1. So, mag add ka ng 1 dyan. So, mag add ka rin ng 1 sa kabila. Dito rin, ganun din. Di ba yung numerical coefficient? Neto is negative 2. So, negative 2 divided by 2, negative 1. Quantity of negative 1. 1 squared is positive 1. So, we will have, ayan, so x squared minus 2x plus 1, okay, plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals negative k over 2 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so kung anong in sa isang side, ayun din yung i-add natin sa kabilang side. Okay, so continue natin. So, eto class, uh, pwede na natin tong isulat as a square of a binomial. So, uh, we can rewrite this as Quantity of x minus 1 squared plus the quantity of y minus 1 squared equals negative k over 2, kinopya lang, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So, we have plus 2. Okay? Ngayon, class, next natin na gagawin. So, uh, yung ato uh, natin, alam natin na equal lang din yan sa 4 over 2. Diba? Kasi 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So, pwede natin isulat to as, okay, ayun. So, Negative k plus 4 over 2. Okay? Kasi nga, di ba, like, 4 divided by 2 ay equal lang din sa 2. 
So we have quantity of x minus 1 squared plus the quantity of y minus 1 squared equals negative k plus 4 over 2. Okay, so again, ito, equal lang yan dito. Okay, ginawa lang natin pareho yung kanilang denominator. Kasi nga, yung 2, equal lang naman yan sa 4 over 2. Yan. Ngayon, class, alalahanin natin yung standard form ng circle natin. So we have the quantity of x minus h squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared equals r squared. Ngayon, class, um, pag binalikan natin yung ating problem, sabi dito, yung logo daw has a diameter of 2 meters. Para makuha natin yung radius, diba, um, i-divide lang natin by 2 yung ating diameter. So kung 2 meters yung diameter, ang radius natin ay 1 meter. So kapag kinuha natin yung r squared, so, we will have quantity of 1 squared. So, 1 times 1, 1 pa rin. Okay? So, 1. So, i-equate natin ito. Okay? Itong negative k plus 4 over 2 sa 1. So, we will have negative k plus 4 over 2 is equal to 1. Okay? Kasi nga, yung r squared natin ay equal lang din sa 1. Okay? Next, solve natin yung k dito. So, what we can do is to multiply both sides by 2. Okay? So, sige, pag multiply natin both sides by 2, so we will have a uh, negative k plus 4 is equal to 2. Okay? Next, uh, mag-subtract tayo ng 4 both sides. Okay? Para yung negative k na lang yung matira sa isang side. So, we will have negative k is equal to 2 minus 4. Ayan. And 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 2. So, we have negative k is equal to negative 2. So, uh, divide natin pareho by negative 1, yung both sides. So, we will have k is equal to 2. Ayan. Substituting back to the student's equation, it should then be 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y plus k equals 0. So, na-compute na natin yung value ng k, uh, which is 2. So, ang result natin is 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 4y plus 2 is equal to 0. So, therefore, the constant should be positive 2. So, again, uh, wag kalimutan, kailangan may conclusion tayo. Sasagutin natin yung hinihingi dun sa problem. And ang hinihingi kasi dito, what should the constant be to make his answer right? So, the constant should be positive 2. Okay, class, uh, proceed naman tayo dun sa ating third example. So, example number three. As night time approached, a woman opened the lampshade in her room and immediately noticed that the lamp cast vertical hyperbolic shadows on the wall. As she had nothing else to do, she decided to do some math. She found out that the center of the hyperbola was three units away from the vertices and the foci were two units away from the vertices. If the center is situated at the origin, find the general form of the equation of these hyperbolic shadows along with the lengths of its transverse and conjugate axis. Okay, class, para mas ma-visualize natin, so let's say ito yung ating lampshade. So ito yung kanyang kinakas na vertical hyperbolic shadows. So i-analyze natin, class, kung ano yung given sa atin. Ayan. So, una class, uh, given dito na yung center natin is situated at the origin. So, kung ilolocate natin dito, so, ito yung center natin with coordinates uh, 0, 0. Pangalawa, nakita niya rin na yung center of the hyperbola was 3 units away from the vertices. So, ang gagawin natin class, magka-count tayo ng 3 units pataas at pababa kasi nga, vertical hyperbolic shadows yung kinakast ng lamp. So, we will have V sub 1 with coordinates as 0, 3 and V sub 2 with coordinates as 0, negative 3. Okay? And nakita niya rin na yung foci were 2 units away from the vertices. Okay? So, from the vertices, magka-count naman tayo ng 2 units pataas. Okay? Tsaka pababa. So, we will have F sub 1 with coordinates as 0, 5 and F sub 2 with coordinates as 0, negative 5. Okay? Ayan. So, ayan class yung given sa atin. Okay? Ngayon, ang hinahanap sa atin is the general form of the equation of these hyperbolic shadows tsaka yung length ng transverse and conjugate axis. So, sige, tingnan natin kung paano natin makukuha. Ayan. 
So, una, ito ulit class yung standard form natin ng um, hyperbola na vertical, yung orientation ng transverse axis. So, we have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Kasi nga, again, yung center naman natin is at the origin. So, ito na yung standard form na gagamitin natin. Okay, so again, standard form po ito ng isang hyperbola na may orientation ng uh, transverse axis ay vertical. Okay, and at the same time, ang center ay nasa origin. Okay, so ayan yung magiging basis natin. Ayan yung gagamitin natin. Ayan. So, una class, kunin muna natin yung value ng B. Okay, kasi uh, dito sa ating given, binigay na sa atin yung value ng A. Eh. Okay, ba? Which is 3. Uh, ang wala sa atin is yung value ng B. Meron na rin tayong value ng C. Okay, ba dito? From center to each uh, foci. So, we have 5. So, ang ibig sabihin, ang C natin dito is 5. So, ang wala tayo is yung value ng B. So, paano natin compute? So, again, uh, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Since hyperbola yung pinag-uusapan natin. So, para makompute si B squared, so uh, we can subtract A squared to both sides of the equation. So, we will have B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. Okay, so yun yung gagamitin natin, class. So, we will have B squared is equal to, ayan, 5 squared minus 3 squared. So, again, ang C natin is 5 kasi nga, di ba, para malocate yung foci, nag, uh, nag, move tayo 5 units pataas at pababa galing sa center. So, ang C natin ay 5. Ang A naman natin ay 3. Okay? Para malocate yung vertices, di ba, nag-move tayo or nag-count tayo ng 3 units pataas at pababa galing sa center. Ayan. So, compute na natin yung B squared. So, we will have B squared is equal to 25 minus 9. Ang 25 minus 9 is equal to 16. So, we have B squared equal 16. Uh, get natin yung square root ng both sides. So, we will have B is equal to the square root of 16. Kunin natin yung principal square root. So, ang B natin dito is 4. Okay? Class, hindi naman hinihingi sa atin yung sketch ng graph, pero para ma-visualize lang natin yung itsura, okay? Or yung form ng sketch ng graph natin, pakita natin. So, 4 units, okay, pa kanan, and then pa kaliwa, ayan. So, yan yung endpoints ng ating conjugate axis. And then, we'll draw the auxiliary rectangle, kung natatandaan from our previous video tutorial about hyperbolas. And then, yung asymptotes natin. Ayan. And then, of course, the branches of the hyperbola. Okay? So, again, kung vertical ang orientation ng ating transverse axis, okay, yung branches ng hyperbola natin will be opening upward and downward. Okay? Ayan. So, pinakita lang natin. So, kapareho nga ng itsura nung shadow na nakas ng ating lamp. Okay? Ngayon, class, sige. So, yung mga nakuha natin na data, ilagay na natin dito sa standard form. So, we will have y squared over, yung a natin is again 3. So, we have 3 squared minus x squared over, yung nakumpit natin na b is 4. So, 4 squared equals 1. So, we will have y squared over 9 minus x squared over 16 is equal to 1. Ngayon, class, take note, ang hinihingi sa atin sa problem ay yung general form ng equation ng hyperbolic shadows. So, what we can do is to multiply both sides by the LCM. Okay? Uh, so, ang LCM or this common multiple nito, nitong 9 at 16 ay 144. So, multiply natin both sides by 144. So, 144 times y squared over 9 ay 16y squared. Okay? And 144 times negative x squared over 16. So, 144 divided by 16 is 9. So, we have negative 9x squared equals 144. Okay, multiply lang to. And then, mag-subtract tayo ng 144 both sides. Okay, para 0 na lang yung right-hand side. So, we will have 16y squared minus 9x squared minus 144 equals 0. So, ito na class ngayon yung ating general form of the equation of the hyperbolic shadows. Ngayon, hinahanap din sa atin class yung lengths ng transverse and conjugate axis. So again, ang length ng transverse axis, so yan ay from V sub 1 to V sub 2. Okay? Ang length naman ng conjugate axis natin ay from W sub 1 to W sub 2. So the transverse axis in a hyperbola is the segment connecting the two vertices. Therefore, the formula for this is 2A. 
easily we get its length by substituting and we get 6 units. Diba? Kasi nga, ang A natin is 3. And 2 times 3, we have 6 units. On the contrary, uh, the conjugate axis is the segment connecting the covertices, which means the formula for this is 2B. We then get 8 units as an answer. Okay, kasi diba ang B natin is 4, so 2B. So 2 times 4, we have 8. Unit. So, yan yung length ng ating conjugate axis. And ang length naman, again, ng ating um, transverse axis is 6 units. Okay, class. So, sana naintindihan natin yung ating third example. So, proceed naman tayo doon sa ating fourth example. So, example number 4. A satellite dish has a shape called a paraboloid, where each cross-section is a parabola. Since radio signals parallel to the axis will bounce on the surface of the dish to the focus, the receiver should be placed at the focus. How far should the receiver be from the vertex if the dish is 12 feet across and 4.5 feet deep at the vertex? Okay, class, para mas ma-visualize natin, i-illustrate natin yung content na itong ating problem. So, we have here the satellite dish, uh, which has a shape called a paraboloid. Ngayon, class, yung radio signals daw ay nagbabounce sa surface nitong ating dish papunta dito sa ating focus. Okay? Kaya kailangan yung receiver ilalagay natin sa focus. Ang tinatanong sa atin, class, gaano kalayo daw dapat natin i-place yung receiver galing sa vertex? Okay? Given na yung dish natin ay 12 feet across and 4.5 feet deep. Okay, so, tingnan natin yung cross-section. So, ang cross-section na itong ating paraboloid is a parabola. So, ito yun. Illustrate natin. So, again, uh, yung dish natin is 12 feet across. Ayan. So, we have negative 6 to 6. So, 12 feet. Okay? And then, 4.5 feet deep. Okay? So, 4.5 feet deep. Ngayon, class, kung i-analyze natin itong illustration, so, itong point na to, of course, is 6 4.5. Itong point na to, sure tayo na nandito yan sa ating parabola. Okay? Ngayon, uh, magagamit natin yung info na yan mamaya sa pagkuha na itong value ng P. Ano yung P ulit? Again, it's the distance from the vertex papunta sa ating focus. Kasi nga, ba dapat ipi-place natin yung receiver dito sa ating focus since papunta sa kanya, nagbabounce yung ating radio signals. So, basically, ang gagawin natin dito, class, is this. So, from the problem, we deduce that 0.6, 4.5 is a point on the parabola. We need the distance of the focus from the vertex, that is, the value of P in x squared equals 4PY. So, kung nare-recall natin, class, ayan yung ating standard form ng parabola opening upward. Okay? So, ang hahanapin natin is yung value ng P. Since sure tayo na yung 0.6, 4.5, uh, lies on the parabola. Ayan. So, masasatisfy niya ito ating equation. So, we can substitute um, 6 for the value of x, then 4.5 for the value of y. So, we will have x squared equals 4py. So, x natin is 6. So, we have x squared equals 4p times 4.5, yung ating y. Okay? So, 6 squared ay 36. So, we have 36 is equal to 4 times 4.5 is 18. So, we have 18p. So, para ma-compute natin yung P, so, gato mo na yung gawin natin using the symmetric property of equality. So, pwede natin balik ta rin yan. So, we have 18P is equal to 36. Divide natin both sides, okay, by 18 para ma-solve natin si P. So, ang P natin dito is 2, okay? Thus, the receiver should be 2 feet away from the vertex. Okay, so, kailangan 2 feet away from the vertex Okay, doon natin ilalagay yung ating receiver. Okay, doon sa mismong focus. Kasi nga, doon magbabounce yung ating radio signals. Okay, so again, mahalaga itong conclusion kasi ayan yung sasagot doon sa hinihingi doon sa problem natin. Kasi ang tinatanong nga, how far should the receiver be from the vertex if the dish is 12 feet across and 4.5 feet deep at the vertex? So, ang conclusion natin dyan, thus, the receiver should be 2 feet away from the vertex. So, na yung ating answer. So, with that, class, uh, here's the list of references that we used in creating this video tutorial. So, sana meron tayong mga bagong natutuhan sa video na ito. So, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye!